Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about Synology DSM-7 and talk about some of the new fancy features that they've finally have rolled out into DSM-7. I say finally because this was actually an update that's been a long time in the making. There was a lot of re-engineering going on in the back end to bring this update to light. And I started as a beta tester on it, and the beta test went so well, and now it's in full production. And yeah, I figured it's time to talk about it. It was actually a pretty smooth transition uh, through all the updates. I didn't notice so far any major your problems, but that's what I wanted to cover to get more people on this version. And if there's any issues, be reporting them back over to Synology. Before we dive into those details, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, including Synology Consulting, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to help this channel out in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. And first, the machine we're going to be using here for the Synology DSM-7 is an RS-1221 Plus that actually I have at home right now. Uh, it's been a solid system for the things that we've been running, and we'll be covering some of the details and some of the testing in there and talking about some of the new features that they have in there. And I want to bring up this is the latest DSM as of today, July 19th, 2021, DSM-7.041890. Let's jump over to the release notes, which are for this exact version. And there's even a bulletin release about some updates for DSM 7041890. And they were updates to fix SAN Manager, Active Insights, and SMB service. So hopefully you got the latest on those. These are some new features, specifically Active Insight is, and it is a way to well, we'll show you, offer active insights and kind of monitoring for the system. But let's go to before you update. The update is expected to be available for all regions within the next few weeks. So if you are not seeing an update for your system, as it says here, wait a few weeks. After the installation of DSM-7, you will not be able to downgrade to a previous DSM version. I wanted to make sure that gets highlighted because with a new version, you can't easily roll back. And I say they officially by Synology, the answer is you cannot roll back. My understanding from reading in some of the forum posts and talking to people, there's an unofficial way to try to get it rolled back. But either way, I want to say not a good idea because it's not officially supported by Synology. So don't you don't want to have to roll back. So make sure that everything that you want to do will work in DSM-7. And I say it like that because there are some things that have been deprecated, including... Lots of USB devices are no longer supported, as in Wi-Fi dongles, Bluetooth dongles, 3G, 4G dongles, USB DAC speakers, and DTV dongle. All these are no longer supported. DSM will end support for EXT3. We strongly suggest backing up the data stored on EXT volumes and transferring the data to volume supported file systems before the update. DSM-7 by default disables NTLM v1 and enables NTLM, NTML v2 only. Now, that's important because that's basically the older version, you know, Windows XP, media players, and some older network printing systems. There's a lot of older stuff that's looking for that support, and it has been removed. It's not the, something that Synology only has done. Uh, there's a lot of flaws in that particular protocol. It's old. It's deprecated all over the place. Uh, so Synology is just joining in on the systems that will no longer be supporting that by default. So I would definitely, if you have a need for that, yeah, you may have to wait. Now, NSF... NFS v4.1 and related advanced functions multipathing are no longer supported on Synology NAS models with the following package architecture. Now, I bring this up too because it is also one of those use cases you may have if you're using this with multipath NFS. It's a fairly advanced feature, but it's missing now on these particular models. So that's going to be one of those things. It's an edge case, but you may have that edge case. These are really important things to know. So I wanted to cover these right at the beginning. Creating SSD caches on block level LUNs is no longer supported. Existing SSD caches LUNs will function normally after the update. I find it interesting that you can't create a new one, but it'll keep supporting them, but interesting. Uh, NT4 domains are no longer supported. Currently, NT4 domains will be unavailable after the update. The iSCSI manager is now that SAN manager, the update that we've seen in there. So they've changed name, but actually kind of looks the same. We'll cover that shortly. When you reconnect iSCSI targets from your VMware ESXi host, after a DSM update, the data stores on the LUNs that are mapped to the targets may not be mounted properly. This happens when 
LUNs to create it before the update, and they have a VMware write up on how to get around that. Not a VMware user, so it's not something I run into. But overall, I would say this particular update, if you're using your Synology as a storage server, while there are some speed advantages they have with it, the important things to consider is going to be are you using this as a storage server? And do you have any of the edge cases that were mentioned here that would? potentially break things because it's not like an update that you can roll to seven and just jump back to six because it didn't work the way you had hoped. So I really recommend if you're using this as a storage server or as a storage target for a hypervisor, specifically VMware here, that you really go through and make sure all of these edge cases have been met and that this will actually work with your configuration. And this particular one's kind of an oddball one, but something of note here. Video conversion to FLV and MPEG-4 part two formats on the following models are no longer supported. So kind of an unusual drop that they had there. Now, packages, this is where there's obviously a lot. Synology Moments and PhotoStation will be upgraded and merged as Synology Photos. Now I'd previously done a video on Synology Moments and I did that because videos, I know a lot of people are probably gonna stay in 6.2 for a little while, but yes, I will be doing a new video on Synology Photos. And that's what I started using. So I started with Moments and dumped a lot of data in there. Then I let it merge merge and migrate over to Photos. So the Photos app is the new unified app as opposed to the way they had it set up before with the two apps. And uh, I think this is better for them to be able to focus on one application. And so far I like it. It's syncing just as well as my Synology Moments app did. So I haven't had any issues with it so far. And I still have a lot more data to dump into it. So I'm actually doing a big migration project uh, for my updated video on it where I take just a massive archive of data and throw it in there and see how it handles it. Cause we really want to know how it works at scale. And I'm hoping to answer that question, at least on my uh, Synology RS series that I have. Now they'll go down on here and list a lot of other little packages in the release notes, such as MariaDB5 is incompatible. So you had to do MariaDB10. This is where some of the nuance gets in there. And there's a lot of packages that are not supported in that's quite a long list here. These are important because these are maybe things that you were using. They did a lot of re-engineering underneath, so to speak, to fix security and the way they segregate all the applications. But by doing that, they broke compatibility with all these different independent third-party apps. So make sure that you're not using some of these on your system in order to do the upgrade. Because as I stated earlier, once you do forward, you can't roll backwards on this. Now, before we dive into the new features, the last couple little pieces of errata that I think really matter here is for models below, you can download the upgrade patch from the Synology Download Center. They list them out here. For these models, DSM-7 for FS, SA, XS, and XS Plus and DVA series models are currently under development and will be available in the next quarter, which means, and unfortunately, I'm unable to test this with my DS-1621 XS Plus. So we'll be using it as a demo system of, you know, kind of a reminder of what it used to look like versus what it looks like now. And I guess this is a good place to start is look and feel. How does it look? Does it feel different? Does it have like a lot of different features? Will I be confused? Actually, not really. I think they did a nice job of polishing it up. They did a great job on the icons, but it's still the familiar Synology interface. We still have the same user management over here. We still have the control panel. And while it does look much the same, and we'll go to like, just open up the actual close and open it. So we're at this page, very similar but you know, you can see it kind of has an updated, refreshed feel on here. Now, one thing right away that you'll notice though, is if you go into the storage manager, this is the old storage manager. And in this one, we get this nice little view. Now for each Synology on DSM-7, they have a view that gives you an idea of what it looks like and it supports, you know, showing you where the drives are installed and being able to click on each of those drives so you can jump right to it. I really like this. This is just a nice enhancement instead of labeling bays or knowing which one it is. I think they did a nice job of, you know, overall, as you go through it, you'll just see, all right, everything's there that I'm used to, but a little bit more. Sometimes there may be an extended menu for a new feature, but there's an overall feeling of the same, but more polished, which is what I like. This is a nice, easy transition into a newer, more modern interface without having to go, oh crap, I have to learn a completely new product. It's it's trying to find that happy middle is hard because as much as we love new and exciting things, uh, trying to hunt and find for things when you do an update sometimes can be quite aggravating. Now let's jump over to Synology page. And you know, this is their marketing page, which they have all their fun 
you know, breakdowns of everything and can give you a more detailed overview. Maybe there's one particular thing you're interested in. So of course, you know, I'll leave a link to this here, but user management and security is somewhere where they did make a lot of enhanced changes. As I said before, the base of it's still the same, but they also have now a high availability directory server. Now, this is not something I've really tested out yet, but it's something that I want to take a look at. It's interesting that they're offering a lot more sign-in options here with secure sign-on, single sign-in app, role delegation, flexible administrative role de delegation. Uh, a lot of this will probably end up as some separate videos I do in the future, but they have really built a lot in here to kind of create a fully serviceable uh, directory system for IT management that will tie together with a series of Synologies. Pretty slick. Now, Synology C2, I've done a video on using this for backup, but they want to extend this further. And this is all part of DSM-7, a cloud for safe data, and it does support encryption prior to sending, which is an important aspect. So you don't have to trust the cloud. You can encrypt before you send, which is great. But they also want to offer a interesting use case where secure file sharing occurs and efficient backup and file syncing. Now, what this allows you to do is, once again, this will be another deep dive I probably do on this specific feature, is offer cloud-based sharing where you may want to share it, but you don't have as much bandwidth as is available in the CZU cloud. So it's kind of a hybrid sharing system that allows you to take files on your Synology, have them available in C2. So they're not the download, I should say, is not limited by you as in your connection. It'll be able to share a file that it gets pulled from the C2 cloud, but it's backed up from your Synology to the C2 cloud in a sharing format. So it'll be some learning to figure out exactly how they implemented all this, but I think it's a really smart way they're doing this. Now, the SAN solution is something there they've renamed the way the iSCSI works in here it also comes with some extra features in there and i haven't had a chance because the only one that we have is our current synology that doesn't support the uh, current dsm7 is the one we're using as our san internally here at the office so um yeah i'm hoping to get it so i can really dive in and test it but the way they're doing the SSD, the caching, and this is going to be an interesting dive in to see what other features it does. I think this is just Synology's commitment that they really want to be a solution for, you know, a storage server for targeted with hypervisors. So I think that's really cool. They're doing a lot of enhancement in that. I haven't really, other than reading through some of the stuff in here that they have better fiber channel support, um, I haven't really dove deep into this in terms of use case yet, because the one server that we have for this is currently not supported. This is this is why I wish it was supported. Now, Synology Photos, I've been using this at home and I've been migrating uh, all of my data over here and I'm pulling all the data I have in the Google Cloud system into here. So once I get around to doing the updated video um, on that, it'll be based on having quite a bit of data in there. Right now I'm just, you know, populating all the different things I have locally, not in Google Cloud, but yeah, I am doing a cloud migration with Google Takeout uh, and I'll cover the import process in there. So for people looking to de-Googleify their life, that is a real option here with Synology Photos. And it kind of comes at the right time because a lot of people are looking for a solution because Google, what was given away for free for a long time is now being charged for. So I know between privacy concerns and being, uh, you know, racked up a bill that you can get for having what used to be an unlimited photo storage system has a lot of people looking at other options. And I think Synology Photo is going to be a pretty popular option for that. And it puts the data back under your control. Now, they still offer all their backup solutions, which is, you know, your Active Backup, Office 365, Google Workspaces, and Hyper Backup. There's not really anything changed there that was dramatic that I noticed, but overall, um, I still really like this as a solution. I do have videos on this, and nothing really looked any different on there, but they do have it as part of the Synology DSM-7 suite. And it really is one of the popular features that people look for in the Synology setup. Now, let's talk about Active Insights. This is a beta feature, but a really cool one. And if you're a IT business owner like myself, this is where you go, hey, I'd like to have a fleet of these out there, but I want to know what they're doing. I want to know if there's a problem. I want to get warnings and critical statuses of all of these. And this is what Synology Active Insights does. It lets you look at events. 
It's just there's any drive issues, how much storage is used on each of these systems, and it's only supported in DSM-7. So as DSM-7 rolls out, I think this is going to be a more important role here, but I like that it gives you statistics. So each one of these are sending those stats to it. It's an opt-in for those of you that don't want to send any stats to Synology, but that's perfectly fine. That's what you're looking for from an IT management standpoint if you have lots of these out in the field. Currently, these are just our in-house ones for testing that we have tied to this Active Insights account, but I think this is a pretty cool feature where they're going with this and it's something that I'm looking forward to to see how it's developed and it's just my understanding at least is it's going to be free but free for up to 50 hosts so even if you are a home user you're going to be able to have a pretty decent amount of insights and once you have over 50 I'm not sure how they're exactly going to uh, offer different subscription plans it's all in beta right now but I still think this is kind of cool so add host subscription plan for premium features such as longer retention of statistics more frequent data updates or custom event triggers like I said they do have some upselling in here but you know from a business standpoint I think this is a pretty cool feature now last thing I'll mention is the interface like I said is pretty much similar but I would say it's a little bit faster now things like going through the packages scrolling through them seems to work pretty fine and one of the things that's of note here, so loading packages, you know, looks pretty good. This one's being routed over a VPN. So this server is actually at my house and I'm here at my office and rolling through things, opening the applications and launching things. Like if I open up any of these, really no issues at all. It's shockingly uh, fast and overall, like I said, quite snappy. So I think the new interface does at least give me the feel. I don't have any real... Uh, objective data on that to tell you that other than it feels faster than the other one but either way the interfaces for a lot of these things like i mentioned is pretty much the same so besides having a more polished interface you're still going to be in familiar territory now if you look at the beta packages they do have plex in here as a beta i am running plex at home it is working fine i've had a few people ask me does plex work so far the answer to that is yes but you know, I know there was some issues if you imported, I loaded Plex after I did it. So you may have to remove Plex and reinstall it to get it to work properly. I know that was the case with a couple of the applications that people had commented with the upgrades. I know Plex went through a couple updates as well um, that I've loaded and they have all loaded fine, but I didn't have any problems with it. But I also didn't load uh, DSM-6, load Plex, and then DSM-7. I loaded DSM-7 and then loaded Plex. So that may be why I had less trouble with it. But overall, my data was still there, so it didn't really matter. And I moved it over from another server that I had at home with all my Plex media and imported it. So that overall went pretty good. I may do some videos on it because there's a couple of ways you can link your data, uh, pulling it from another server and copy it in here. I think Synology did a good job of making that easier, but there's going to be a lot to cover when you talk about future future videos in here because there's you know all those little nuanced changes in some of the new features. But overall, I don't see a reason unless you have one of those edge cases mentioned at the beginning of the video um, not to upgrade to Synology. If you are not using any of those or you don't have a need for the USB dongles, I think this is a great upgrade overall. One thing I will comment on I thought was pretty cool and actually close this and we're going to go here to the Synology account is when you tie this to your Synology account, enable active insight and performance metric collection. Also, it can do backups on here. As you sign in your Synology account, quick check DNS and configuration, automatic backup of your Synology NAS all happens in there. I think this is pretty cool that they're offering this. Um, this is a nice nicety to me to be able to have the configuration automatically backed up. But this is a opt-in, not something you have to try to opt out of. So those of you that don't want it talking to Synology or you're more concerned about privacy, then yes, you don't have to use this service, but it is a service they do offer for performance metric collection and these active insights. I think they're pretty cool, but they let you choose. And I think that's an important aspect of it is giving the user the choice on that. All right, I'll leave links down below to the release notes because uh, there's a lot to cover in there. And uh, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly. So check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. 
In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.